I held a Uzi when I was 14. I punk kids for lunch and Yu-Gi-Oh cards in elementary school. I fucking ran from the cops in middle school. Allegedly threatened teachers in high school. Dropped out of college. Failed art class and music classes. Three of my best friends died and my cousin by the time I was 20, I got kicked out of my house when I was 21. I bought my first gun when I was 23. I launched my clothing business at 26. My point is, I persevered and I let nobody get in my fucking way. Fuck the haters, bro. That's the message of the day. Rich Max was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side of that gat is karma you wet prada the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my head uh-huh 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 we are back with another episode of the god's hour podcast with your boy big sir Bavelli back in the place to be la merca superior palace 81 studios and we gotta fix the mic mic stand actually no this one's on me because fucking i don't want to sit like I don't know. I want the mic more up in my fucking grill, but this is fucking bullshit. Great. Thanks for cooperating with me, Mike. Fucking Stan, up until this point. Right? Goods right here? I'm going to put this on my shoulder. All right. All right, all right. We should be good. We should be good. Hold on. Are we good right here on the fucking, on the mics, dog? I got to fix anything? Yo, 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 yo. Okay. All right. It doesn't matter now. It don't matter. Uh, fucking busy, but let's get the mathematics out of the way, guys. You know, you know, I love the fucking mathematics. Today is August 29th, 2024. Today's math is wisdom and born, all being born to culture freedom. Wisdom is to learn from knowledge, which makes you wise. Born is bringing about that wisdom in your life, freeing those of ignorance. Those who willfully choose to not bring about peace and positivity in this world are doomed to live a negative life. Be wise peace so we got a lot of whole shit to talk about starting with my favorite fucking one um i fucking almost got carjacked which was awesome you know what i mean uh, i was getting gas and it's funny because you like you feel the shit in the air like you like oh no this is some fucking bullshit like why is today weird you know what i mean so i've been seeing a whole lot of broken down cars and accidents and shit like that and i think when you have a commute like I do, I think that's like warranted, you know what I mean? But just something recently has just been like off, like, nah, like this isn't, this isn't cracking, crack a lacking over here, bro, you know what I mean? So I'm getting gas at the gas station, and the gas station clerk is like, yo, uh, I just want to let you know, I don't know why he told me this. He's like, yo, bro, the cops is heavy out there whatever i don't know why he told me that like cops is out there heavy you know just be careful they busting everybody they can out there you know so be careful and i was like all right cool no worries that that wasn't the issue right so i'm playing pokemon and there's no other unique times that you will get in trouble than pokemon i'm playing pokemon and there's the apartments, but you need the you know the apartments. Apartments got them gates that you know they you gotta have the code or whatever to get in. But I always assume that this apartment is just automated, like it just lets you in and out, right? So it wasn't one of those things. So why I'm going there is because there's a pokey stop. A pokey stop for anyone who doesn't know, it's like you could spin it and it gives you fucking potions and shit like that, magical things. So I pull up to the gate. The gate don't open. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not hopping out the car and getting in on foot. I'm just going to catch whatever's over here and I'm going to leave. Right. So I'm catching whatever squirtles, Pikachu, shit like that. And I'm going in reverse and I'm backing out. I see some fucking white boy right on the car. And I'm like, did this fool just pop up like Michael Myers? Like, what the fuck? So I'm looking at this fool and 
he's like get the fuck out of the car or some shit he said he said something at first like i don't know if he thought i really thought he, i think that he thought i was somebody because he's traveling on foot and he's not even on a sidewalk he's like on the side of the road you know on the street and so i'm like i pieced it together later but he told me some shit i don't know i was like what and he's like he tries to open the car door and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And and he's like, get the fuck out of the car. Socks my car. But it wasn't like a sock like fucking like GTA where they just bash your shit in and they get you and they pull you out. It was like a fucking he knew he would he, he was going to have to break his hand and get in my car because he just hit him. He just snapped it. Right. Snapped the punch. And when he did that, I was like, yo, I was like, what the fuck? I put this shit in the drive and he just takes two steps back. I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm about to run you over. It's three in the morning. Ain't nobody. Ain't, I'm not worried about nothing, bro. Like I'm I'm I could easily go to the judge. You know, I'm in fear for my life. I had to run this bitch. Bitch ass slave out over. And it was a done dilly. But yeah, it was just crazy. I wanted to tell I wanted to roll down the window and tell him you hit like a bitch, bro. You punch like a little girl. But like. My auntie eyes kicked in right away, and I was like, oh, hell no. Like, if this fool tries to, like, because what I thought was going to happen was, I thought, I literally thought he was going to pull a piece on me. So I said, yo, I'm going to go in reverse, and I'm going to hit this fool. Fuck this fool if he tries to, you know what I mean? If he pulled a knife out, it would have been fucking boom, bam, like fucking, you know, the ba- the Batman and Joker comics. What's up, boy? I'm just talking about the uh, the car crash. You want to come over here? I want to say hi, boy? Come here. Let's say hi to the people, boy. We're going to have another appearance from the highly beloved Presley. Hey, boy, what's going on? Tell, tell something to the people. Tell them something. Tell them. Good boy. Look at that. <laughs> That's fucking... Buddy, why do you always look... Why do you always look like you're in distress? You always look like you're fucking in distress. Is there something up with being distressed? Out, hey. Presley's love is a g d d d d d d d d d d d Look at that. Your fucking peepees out of my fucking podcast, but you gotta cover it up, buddy. I don't want the fucking red rocket of fucking Reaganomics over here, but you understand me. You understand me. I love you forever. You're the fucking corazón de mi malón. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Boss, if necessary. Look at that. So, yeah, I was just telling him how this fucking asshole, he almost robbed me from my fucking car. And literally, that wasn't going to happen. Like, you're going to have to fucking shoot me to get my fucking car. You know what I mean? This fucking thing almost stabbed me in the nose, buddy. How you feel about it? You know? So, yeah, fuck that fool. And I was just like, wow, I never experienced like a first-hand carjacking. You know what I mean? I'm going to put you down. All right. Good boy. Um, So, yeah, real, real wicked, man. It, it, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what's up with people. Like, why? I really think he thought I was somebody else. But it just, it doesn't matter, bro. Like, I don't know. And because of that, like, I've been driving my dad's car, so I'm like, yeah, you're definitely going to have to fucking smoke me to get my pops' car. Like, you're not, there's no way I'm letting you have my father's car without a fight. You know what I mean? Um, Got a lot of shit. I haven't done a podcast in, like, three weeks or some shit like that. And I, I, I don't like it, but at the same time, it's kind of like, whatever. You know what I mean? That's just what, you know, I've been super busy with work. I have like four or five songs to record, and I don't even know if I'm if I'm gonna do them today because I still gotta watch the fucking car, and that's pretty much it. But I just want to chill, man. Um, I've been losing more weight. I don't know if you guys could tell. I still got fat, flapping ass arms, but that's okay. Um, so I was like two fifty five when I started working, and because of work, like I'm doing super like physical activity all day, every day. So now I'm um. I was at 235 yesterday, but then I had to celebrate to celebrate, which is 101 pounds down, guys. I was 336 fucking pounds. For those of you who uh, who don't know, you know, I, I, I ballooned out around 
the pandemic when I was just getting money for sitting on my ass. I was just smoking weed, drinking, and spending my money on... I was literally spending my money on fast food, booze, and weed. And that was the perfect combination for me to fuck my whole health up. And that's what happened. I, uh, for the longest, I was like chilling around 310. Then I went up to like 317. And then I ballooned out because I was eating Wingstop every day. And even the the lady, shout out to the cute lady at Wingstop. Um, she was like, you come and eat here like every day, dude. Like, you know forgot why what the um what why she said that but i was just like yeah you know um whatever right um uh, i eat wing stop every day i'm fat whatever so i stopped like and it was just weird because i was i was just eating like a pig every day just the the meal I would eat if I tracked it on Weight Watchers right now, and this is not you know no paid pro- sponsorship. Weight Watchers, y'all gotta cut the check, man. Um, and there goes the helicopters. Oh, it's the cops. Ah, ah. Um. So, uh, what what happened was, I was just eating wing stops every wing stop every day, and the fucking, I would have a. The 10 piece, and here I go shouting out Wingstop too. What the fuck am I doing? So I would have five fucking original hot wings, five garlic parmesan wings, fries, two blue cheese dips, and a large Dr. Pepper. And I mean, that sounds so fucking bomb right now, but I can't because I can't. I can't really, my body doesn't really dig fried foods and, and just growing and on my health journey, like I figured out like, w- like as my body's changing, what I like and what I don't like, what are these fools doing, dog? Fuck out of here. What the fuck is going on? Come on, dog. I'm trying to do a fucking podcast and I'm like, <laughs> come on, fool. Fuck off. We're not in Compton, fool. We're like in the nicest part of Ontario, bro. Go fucking go on the west side and go fight some real crimes. Um. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted by the OPD, that meal, you go buy points on Weight Watchers. Here I go plugging them. So let's just say, like, so anything green, and it, and it really just depends on you, like. They, they, they'll they switch it up. And when I first started, they didn't have like the it was like what it is now. So like vegetables are zero points and you get a certain amount of points for your height, your weight and your age. So for me, I started at 65, which is a lot of fucking points like you can eat a lot of bullshit in 60. Like, let me like let me just bring it to you. Like what 65 points would be. I think I would, at, when I first started, I would eat one large pizza and a mint and chip ice cream milkshake. That was 65 points. I can't eat that today. Maybe I could eat a, a whole large uh, pizza and I'll be good. Like, that'll be, but, but see, here's the thing. This is when I could eat fucking pizza. No, 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 I couldn't because I was, I was still lactose. I've been lactose for like... For some years already. And I, I didn't even know I was lactose. And I didn't even know I couldn't. I had like red meat out like an allergy or they say they want to see this is the thing with people. They want to label shit like, oh, he has he's gluten free. He's vegan. Oh, he's he's a fucking asexual. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Like either you can or you can or you like or you don't like certain shit. For me, I'm lactose. And I can't really eat red meat. If I eat red meat, it has to be very, like, a very, very subtle portion. And how I found out about that, about the red meat shit, was I would go with Chava Style. Shout out to Chava. We would go eat at the fucking, at the taco spot. And I would love their carne asada. But when I, Presley, stop licking your fucking paws. Don't think I'm not going to interrupt the program to give you these daily messages, all right? I will fucking body slam you and give you a couple of fucking kisses, all right? You better chill out, homie. So, um, what the fuck was I talking about? So, with Chava, I would eat, um, carne asada tacos or burritos or fucking, um, 
Al Pastor Sopez with, with your bomb over there. But I would notice that I would need to take Pepto Bismol a lot. I'm not going to explain to you why. Maybe I can. Maybe it's because I would take watery fucking shits that just would fucking probably look like mud sliding down fucking Thunder Mountain. Pause. But that's what it was. And then Chava would tell me. You know, Chava's funny, so you'll crack jokes on me or whatever. That's fine. I don't really give a fuck about that part. But I'm just like, okay, like, something's up. That's what made me go do all the blood work, which reminds me I got to pay my fucking bills. I think I just got bit by a fucking mosquito out here. Great. Um. So, yeah, like, I'm just figuring my body out, and it's just... That's what being on, like, my whole health shit is, like, about. I'm, I've been thinking about doing the whole, like, juicing, like, raw juice, like, Sal's P. But I don't know. I, I don't think I'm ready to, to jump into that yet because I'm still like I, f- I got to feel full. I don't think like drinking a whole bunch of juice is going to get me to feel full. And I don't mean just like, you know, you, you drink you could drink water until you're full. But like it's like empty, you know what I mean? It's like an empty feeling of like, oh, no, you know, it, you're not really full. You're just like full of water. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I was 336 pounds, stopped eating Wingstop, came down to 317, started doing Weight Watchers. And, like, I never told this before, but, like, I did um, some mushrooms, like, some Mexican mushrooms, and those shits, like, changed my whole life. I started, literally after that is when I feel like everything changed for me, like, my music and fucking, um, just my whole life, like, the way I thought and shit like that, even to now. Um... But after I did those shrooms, I started playing Pokemon Go. I started getting on my health shit. And it was just, I was already, I feel like it, it all, like, was coming to, like, this uh, crescendo of, like, my the start of my journey. But, like, the shrooms really helped me out to, like, dog, you really do got to change and shit. And, like, I, I don't want to promote, like, psychedelics or whatever. But the first trip was, like, really good. But, like, the last three I did were bad, you know, and, uh, um, I kind of like feel like those bad trips contributed more to my anxiety now, but who knows? I'm not a fucking doctor. Maybe they just brought it out more. I don't know, but I do get like fucking anxiety and it's weird because like some, when it's really bad, I'll think like, I'm having a bad trip again, but all the bad trip was me having really heavy anxiety. So it's like the chicken and the egg is like, do I feel like I'm tripping? Like, uh, do I feel like I'm having a bad trip because I have anxiety or am I having anxiety because I had a, you know what I mean? So it's just super weird. But right now, like right now I'm pretty cool. You know what I mean? But there's moments and there's times where like I really get on CIs in it and it fucking sucks. You know what I mean? I just been thinking and thinking and, uh, I've been taking like lion's mane mushrooms, uh, which is they're not psychedelics, but they're like it's weird because I feel like they kind of like rewire my brain in a sense. So, like, I feel like they just help me think better. If that makes sense. So if if I if I have anxiety, I'll start thinking through the roof, like the world's gonna end. But like while I'm on like the lion's mane supplements, now I'm just like, that's okay. Like take a deep breath. It's gonna be fine. You know what I mean? There's no. It's, not, it's nothing, you know what I mean? So, uh, I've been thinking a lot about, um, you know, I've been talking to, like, I've been talking to this girl, um, and it's just, it's not working out. So, that made me think about, like, the other past relationships and women in my life, and I'm just like, okay, what is it here that we have to work on so we don't have to, we don't repeat the same fucking mistakes? Well... When I was, like, around 20, and I was, like, really trying to, like, be, like, interested in, like, girls and, like, try to get a girlfriend and shit like that, I was, like, smoking weed, not in the right mind, and I was still, like, in pain. Like, in 2018, depending on, like, whenever fucking time it was, it was, like, you know, that's when, like, I learned, like, Josh had committed suicide. So, I was still hurting pretty bad. Like, but that was later on. That was, like, in November. But even still, like... You know, I had been three year, uh, years since, like, Ian, six years since, like, fucking Jaime. And Jaime, in July, man, uh, it was 12 years that he's been gone. And that's fucking crazy. Raul, it was nine days ago on the 20th. Um, 
still fucks me up to this day, but I feel like I could deal with it better. You know what I mean? It's not um, a crippling depression where I'm in my bed just completely devoid of all life. You know what I mean? Like how it was before. I'm just like, you know what? They're in a better place and they're literally watching over me and guiding me through my life. So that's been helping me, right? Rest in peace to Jaime and Raul, by the way. Ian and Josh and my grandpas. Um, it's really... Uh, hopefully that shit don't cut into the fucking mic. But whatever, right? We're here. I feel like just... Um, not only like... like Okay, so physically, right? So going back to... I was 317, started Weight Watchers in 2020. It's 2024, almost exactly four years later. They want to say it's like... 80 pounds if we're going 237 which is right on weight watchers but the biggest i ever got was 236 i was at 235 yesterday i didn't weigh myself today so let's just say i'm at 235 right because i'm around there uh because fucking yesterday at mcdonald's but and fuck fuck you mcdonald's clown ass leva over here making me fucking plug you and shit pause um so yeah that would be 80 but then that's 101 pounds so I'm uh, physically getting right, but mentally is where I'm trying to, like, figure out, like, do I fucking need a therapist? A therapist would be cool, but what the fuck is a therapist? It's just a person that talks to you. Okay, I could find a friend in that. And that is the the nucleus, the key to, I feel, my uh, emotional baggage that I've been carrying around. Literally... I wanted a friend more than I wanted a girlfriend. Like, I wanted a best friend, male or female, doesn't matter, more than I wanted to have, like, a relationship with a woman. And I wanted a relationship with girls, too, but I just didn't know. Like, I could have had a bunch of girlfriends already, you know? It's just me. Like, I wasn't in the right state of mind, you know? Uh, women basically gravitated towards me, and I was just, like, pushing them away with my... I, you can't blame it on immaturity. It, it's just you can't blame it on anything. But like besides that, I, I just wasn't in the mental space to be around women in that capacity. You know what I mean? And the, and the women that I really did like and there's one girl that I like. Uh, if I if I like lose her in this life, I really will feel like a fucking bozo because like, I don't know. I just feel like with this one special girl, I feel like. We're, like, connected telepathically and, like, mentally and all this shit. And, like, when you look at, like, your soulmates, because I'm super big into astrology, you, you, like, you look at the charts and then, like, I've done tarot readings and they're like, oh, yeah, this chick is, like, your soulmate. You guys are soulmates for sure. And these other girls that I've been dealing with are not. You know what I mean? So I'm okay with losing them. You know, I have, like, human emotions over these uh, women that I've lost in my life, but that's okay. Like, um, they've had kids or they've got married and shit like that. Like, oh, well, like, who gives a fuck? Like, life is a wheel, you know what I mean? Like, just because you think you're on the bottom doesn't mean tomorrow you can't be on the top. And then the same thing, just because you're on top doesn't mean you can't be on the bottom. Like, it's just, it's a wheel. And I'm not trying to wish bad on anybody, but I'm just saying, like, if you, if if our relationship doesn't work, me and any any girl... Like, that's fine, you know what I mean? Because I feel like God has always put a plan in place for everybody seeing everything in your life that's happened already. So if, like, it'd be selfish because my number one love is always going to be music. I feel like there's nothing in this world that I feel like I'll love more. Maybe with this one chick, I don't know. Um, it's just, it's been a long time since, I, since I've seen her. And, like, I'm literally going to get emotional right now. So... With that, it's kind of like, I don't want to block anybody's happiness. Like, if you're happy because you want to fucking do hair or do makeup and shit like that, it's like, who the fuck am I? You know what I mean? I'm trying to do music and, like, I already know how women are. It's like, anytime you tell them no or I can't do it or I'm busy, like, they'll fucking shit on you. Like, if women cut me off because, like, I was, like, being, like, smothering or shit like that, it's like... Okay, well, you could have never have fucking dealt with me, like, during the low points in my life. Because I went through super lows, you know what I mean? And that was another thing. Like, I, ne I never wanted to get into a relationship when I felt like both parties weren't, like, together. Like, synergy, you know what I mean? So, 
I had to cut all that in my life, and now I'm trying, like, I'm getting back into like trying to find love. You know what I mean? And that's not really working. So it's just like, fine, fuck it. Like, I'm just being like very accept, like receptive and accepting of everything, and just letting all the bullshit go. Like, you know what? Thinking about bullshit or thinking about shit that didn't work out, like all day every day, is not helping. Like, it's literally been fucking my mind up, and it's no. It's not going to change anything. So just fucking accept it, dude. And like, that's literally what I was telling myself uh, the other day at work, just like working and shit. And I was like, literally, I'm tripping over nothing because these women don't even think about you, bro. These women are out there living their lives. They're fucking the fuck. Is that a seagull? That was weird. These women in your life, they're happy without you, bro. They got kids, they're married, they're strippers, they're whores, whatever it is, they're sucking dick on Figaro. It doesn't matter. And what are you doing right now? You're doing what you love to do. So, you know, it's like they say when you see a a flower, you look at it, you don't pick it and it dies and all that shit. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, just be thankful of the fact that, okay, yes, you probably did like this chick. She probably had feelings for you somewhere along the line. It didn't work out and your life is here and and their life is there. Literally, I've had dreams like going back to love is love. You know, I seen it in my dreams. The path split, the love is in between. I literally had a dream about this. I had like three of like the same dreams about this girl of like, you know, let's just say we're holding hands and shit. And then like somebody literally came and they started talking and like she left me like, you know what I mean? Like literally the pa- like that's why I say the past, split, you know, like she literally went this way. I went that way. And that was the dream. And I had like two other dreams like that. And it freaks me the fuck out because sometimes I'll have deja vu where I like I seen this shit in my dreams. Like I fucking seen this somewhere, you know what I mean? Down the line. And it came back. It's like God telling me like, dog, I got you. Like, don't even trip. Like, see these signs. You know what I mean? I'm putting these messages out there for you. And all you got to do is trust, bro. Like, just trust me and you'll be fucking, you'll be all good. And um, so I'm trying not to trip about that. You know what I mean? Like, fucking uh, roller coaster of emotions just because, like, I, I can't. I would love to do a podcast every week. I would love to, you know, write and record every day. But it's just like, that's not what's, you know, that's just not possible. You know, uh, um, I'll get tired. I'll get fucking, you know, I want to fucking chill. And I, I don't feel like doing music, you know. Let's see. Uh, um, um, I think it was on the 15th, but rest in peace to Sean Price, bro. One of the illest. Like, Sean P was the rapper that I'll, I know I'll never be as good as. And when I he's the reason why I started rapping, like when I started rapping, I was like literally in the school of Sean Price. Like, how can I, you know, sound like this for rap like this for in my own way? You know what I mean? Uh, my uncle would tell me, oh, that's that boot camp, Steez. You know what I mean? Um, so I love Sean Price. I, I don't know if I have a favorite album, though. Cause like he has songs from like everywhere that I love from Imperious Rex songs in the key of price, his mixtapes, donkey, Sean jr. Monkey bars, but I'll say Jesus price. Superstar is my favorite, um, album of his, I uh, got crisis. Like what? Uh, it's a fucking sick ass album. You better stop and think about dun, 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 dun. you better stop. Think about, mm. He's like, forget it. Don't waste your time. I raised the nine. Yeah, Sean Price is fucking sick, bro. Um, I'm not sure anymore more who is knocking at my door, door. All the people that I know acted funny when Big Rug got some loot. But they can't see me. Let my parabellum fly. Yeah, sh- shout out to Sean P, bro. Yeah. Um... Uh, let's see. I don't know if I talked about this, but the hospital, they sent me like a bill for like $250. I'm like, where the fuck did this come from? They're like, oh yeah, we forgot to send this to you when you did all your blood work. I'm like, thanks for letting me know a month later. You know what I mean? Fucking cocksuckers. But going with that, it's just kind of like, I'm good. I'm okay. Um, I'm losing more weight, which like I told you, I was like, like borderline, um, fucking, what is that shit called? 
high blood pressure. So I'm just trying to work on my shit more uh, health wise, mentally, and just get everything in check, like mentally, physically, all that shit. You know what I mean? Um, I have a whole bunch of shit here, dog. We got like 10 minutes. That's all good. Um, I have a bunch of shit. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I know how I'm going to end it. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I have, okay. I have a lot. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, my bad. Um, we got four new fishes. Four new fucking fishes, guys. Uh, so I think you could see them over there. Oh, no. Those are bubbles. They're trying to mate again. Wow. Those motherfuckers are fucking bony. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fucking. Yeah, bro. Literally, um, there's some horny motherfuckers in there. Uh, we got a lot of males. I want more females. But here's the thing, though. Like, you can only have, like, one female per, like, 1,000-gallon pond. And that's a 600. So I literally got to call up the homies and be like, yo, dog, take uh, this fish off of my hands. Because it's, like, fucking. There's um, 18 fish in there, you know. Only, like, only one of them is, like, 10, which is the mama. Sh oh, shit. You see that shit? Goddamn, son. The fucking mama is, uh, is sh sh the mama's around like maybe 10 or maybe a, a more than 10, maybe 11 at this point. And then her babies have to be like five. Oh, so fuck it. I don't know why I yawn. I got some good sleep. I got like eight hours of sleep, dog. Um, we got four new fishes and I, I I've been documenting, um, or actually, last year I was documenting. I'm not really documenting now because it's super hot. But maybe later on I'll, I'll put a, like, when it's not hot, when the sun sunlight is not directly out or whatever. Or maybe I'll have, like, some sort of umbrella on top of the camera because my shit will overheat and it'll fuck up everything. But four new fish. They're all mixed. Um, one of them has, like, a red head with a white tail. And then the Kratos, I know he's a male now because Kratos, I could tell, was just giving it a Hera and gave her like two babies already or maybe actually maybe Hera gave her one and then uh, I mean H uh, Kratos gave Hera a baby and Hades gave Hera a baby because one of them looks like Hades Hades has like the Oreo you know pattern a lot of black and white Shiro, uh, Shiro Itsuri and shit like that or Shiro Itsuri Shiro Itsuri how do you say it in Japanese I don't know Spanish to Japanese um I fucking love my koi fishes to death. Uh, that's another reason why I'm always busy is because I got to take care of these guys. Literally, one was fucking trapped under a rock. You know what I mean? This fucking uh, one of the most beautiful koi fish I've ever seen in my life. I've seen a lot of fucking koi fish. This is the most beautiful fish I've ever seen. It's like a nice, like, hugo fucking, you know what I mean? Um, harito orange with like white accents and it has like the long fins you know what i mean like beautiful like beautiful beautiful fish i'm um, feeding the fish i see the and i just see uh because the rocks like let's say it's like a big rock crevice big rock in the crev and there's like two crevices right rocks like stacked next to each other and then crevices i see the i see like a fish eye and then on this one i see the tail and so I'm like, huh, that's a big fish right there, bro. That's not one of the babies. You know what I mean? And I check the fish every day, to, like, you know, obviously for shit like this. And I look and I'm like, that's not a baby, bro. That's a big fish. So I'm trying to like my dumb ass. I take all my, you know, I'm, I'm going to start taking all my clothes off so I can go swimming with these fools and see. But like, that's not a good idea because with all the moss in the pond, I was slipping each shit. So I was panicking. Got a shovel and just put the sh put the shovel in, lifted the rock and I seen I seen it was our orange fish and I was like oh my god how long have you been there bro how long have you been trapped? I remember like I like I get super scared that our fish are gonna die because like we've lost a bunch of fish like I want to say like we've had at least around fifty fish, uh, counting the new guys we've had around fifty fish and we only have like eighteen now you know what I mean we've lost a bunch of them. You know what I mean? Especially, like, rest in peace. Hera, one of her babies. You know what I mean? Uh, we lost Persephone. Um, Athena. Athena. When Athena died, I was like, you know what? 
I told my pop, and like I'm a dickhead for this, but I told my pop, you know what? Just let them die. Let them all fucking die. Like if if you don't want to take care of the pond and shit like that, you know what I mean? Like, so that's why I really put the onus on me. Like you know what? I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna take care of them because my pops is busy. My pops is busier than me, so that's like the dickhead part. Like full, like he barely has time. You know what I mean? Um, but when Athena died, like it fucked my whole shit up. And from there we got like a new pond system and like, I've been taking care of them, been giving them like special food and like, just like, we're really doing it up with these guys, but it's going to, it's getting to the point where there's too many of them and high key. I don't want to give them away because I don't want, I don't want to give them to a family that's not going to care for them. You know what I mean? I don't want to sell them because that's not my deal. I'm not a breeder. I'm not a breeder and I'm not a seller. I don't care about making money off of my fish. Like, I love my fish and they're my family. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck about any of that other shit. So, with the fish, I lifted the shovel. I put the shovel under the rock. I lifted it up and I fucking, like, slipped. And it and the fucking, she was, a, uh, like, the fish was going to get out. But then it, you know, the rock fell. And I was like, oh, my God, please don't tell me it fucking smashed her and shit like that. Uh, but I lifted it again. And I got, I flipped the rock over. Because what I was trying to do was just lift it enough to get the fish out. To, like, just keep the rock in place. But I was like, you know what? Fuck that, bro. Fuck this rock. And I just lifted it in it. I threw it and shit. And it'll probably be on the bottom of the floor for the rest of the pond's life. But that's okay. Um, I was thinking if we could, like, extend the pond. Like, make it wider or something like that. But that'll be, like, a thousand, like, thousands down the line. So, I don't know. I do want to make it, like, bigger, but it'll be a whole fucking process, so who knows. But, yeah, Operation Save the Koi was a success, and the fish is doing good right now. It's not hurt. It's swimming fine. It's eating, so everything is good. They're trying to mate right now, so that's how I know everything is good with them. Uh, um, Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Man, I didn't even get in it. In should I just make this a longer podcast? Let me, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So I've been doing shows at Pomona Loud. Shout out to Il Cruz. And it's dope. Like I've never, I've never performed in Pomona. Uh, over there, but I knew about this place for a long time, and it's got a real nice vibe. Like it's like real psychedelic. They got fucking uh, some sort of like a like a wall, like a like a fucking L, like a L wall, ninety degree wall, and they put like lasers on it, and like a green, like a like a like a screen. They put like a fucking display on it, and it, it, they sometimes make it look like a galaxy and shit like that. It, it's fucking fire, you know what I mean? Um, so I've been, I've been going over there. I saw the homie Bravo over there. Shout out to him. Bravo 562. Shout out to you. And I took my uncles with me. And the the first time I went there, I took my Theo Frank and my Theo Angel over there. And my Theo, they were trying to get pussy. And I'm like, was like, bro, I'm here to perform. And that was another thing. Like, I always ask girls like, yo, come to my show and shit. But like, uh, it just feels weird. You know what I mean? Um, I'm there to perform, and I want to leave right away. So if I bring a girl and she wants to watch the rest of the show, no, I don't want to do that. I want to leave, but I don't know. Um, when I get a when I have a girlfriend, it'll be different. But like just dating and shit, I don't want I don't want that shit around. Uh, you know, like I'll put it out there, like, hey, I'm doing a show, but like, I'm really like happy that. The only the only girl to ever there's been only been one girl that ever went to see me and like she was really cool. Um but she left right away, you know what I mean? I would have loved to I don't know. I don't know. I was so stupid when I was young. So naive. So like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, like this chick was super into you and you didn't even pull no moves on her. <sighs> Whatever. It's fine. It's okay. Don't think about it too much. Okay. So Rock Marciano, right? He's doing an interview. I forgot who he was doing an interview with, but they're like, yeah, everybody, the interviewers and like all interviewers are like dick suckers in a sense, but they're like, yeah, you know, uh, you're the king of the underground or all this shit. And, you know, Griselda, that was all your wave and shit. And 
I thought rock was going to be like, well, you know, they got their own style. I got my own style, but we influence each other. That's what I would have said, right? What does this fool go? Oh, they know what it is. Oh, everyone, everyone knows and all that shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? So now they got the media is like putting that shit out there. And I feel like rock is just, oh, if they believe that, then fuck it. Like, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Like, no, bro. Like, that's not what it is. When Griselda first came out, nobody was like, yo, these fools are fucking, uh, this is Rock Marciano's whole wave. No, if anything, people were like, yo, this is the best shit to come out since Wu-Tang. I think Combat Jack just said it. Like, you know, told, I think Combat told West Side Gun, you know, your flow is unmistakably Rock Marciano. That's literally verbatim what Combat said. And you could see West is like, uh, yeah, but you know, I listen to the Rocks, the Ghosts, the Rays, being very respectful about it. Rock was not being respectful. And I think it's just like everyone just sucks his fucking dick. And Rock Marcy is just like, you could just tell this fool is like full of himself, right? And he's just like, there's no leeway with this fool. Like, oh, like, nah, you know, these fools are cool. You know, we, I'm doing my thing, then they thing, you know, ba da da. Nah, man. And I don't want to. I don't want this to come off as no Rock Marcy. I love Rock Marciano. He's one of my biggest influences. But if anyone were to come out the window and be like, "Oh, this fool got," you know, "this fool's unmistakably rock," I'd be like, "You're unmistakably stupid." You know what I mean? Um, it's funny because when I first met DTO, um, uh, I think uh, MC Rules, he was like, "Yeah, this fool reminds me of Rock Marciano." Uh, and then what's his name? Um, Abe the Freak. Uh, said I sound like Boldy James. I don't think I sound like that, like especially Boldy at all. That's no disrespect, but it's just like, you know, Rock, I don't mean to sound like, I, I don't want to disrespect him in any way, but to me, I haven't felt, I, have, I, don't, I, haven't, I don't think Rock has made a better album than... Rosebud's Revenge and his whole catalog. Marsberg is up there. And if you want to like go like raw versus like grittiness or grimy shit or whatever, you could say there is an argument for like I'll say his top three are reloaded, Marsberg, Rosebud's Revenge. But like after that, bro, it's like I don't know where he went. I feel like the the closest he got to like that plateau was uh Behold the Pale Horse. But that's it, bro. All this like lazy rap shit is boring as fuck to me, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to. I don't want anyone to misconstrue. Like if I'm shitting on him, like I'm totally giving him his flowers. Like I think he's dope. He's influenced the fuck out of me from his beats to his rhymes. I think he's one of the best rapper producers of all time. He's definitely got albums I I've loved and I've studied and all that. But like to just broad stroke a whole narrative when like real ones know like where this shit like how shit is is like lame to me. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's another thing. Like going back to like. When, with the whole mock shit where I felt like this shit was disappointing with some of his, like, views. Same thing with Rock. Like, it was like, I knew Rock had, like, a super ego. But after that, the whole, like, oh, they know what it is and all that. I'm like, that was corny, bro. And, and you know, um, it's not to shit on him. It's not to shit on nobody. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I mean, no got fucking bit right now. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. That's fine. You know what I mean? It's just for me, I love this music shit so much. And I'll, I'll love an artist's music and I'll buy into it, right? I've literally bought into their music. Like, I'll, I was a Makami investor, Rock Marcy investor. And I'm just not anymore because I, I feel like their music isn't there. Like it, And it mostly has to do with um, the nostalgia and... The fact that I'm not, I, I'm not really listening to rap like that anymore, you know. So it, it just it's different because I'm not, I'm not in a today's rap like back in 2017. I was super contemporary. I was on the Heem Stogies, the Vinos, Nax, Griselda, all them, right? But now I'm listening to old shit. Like I like literally all I've been listening to is like Ghostface albums and Ray's albums. You know what I mean? Like. I'm just not in the contemporary chamber anymore, and that's fine. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe I'll come back and and I'll be like, I'll renege. Like, oh man, I was bugging. Like this rock album was dope, or, or this mock album was dope. I do feel like with the rich ass Haitian album, I do feel like he's like right there with Pray for Haiti too. He's right there. Like, 
I'll say it's HBO right under that is Pray for Haiti right under like right with that is uh, Rich Ass Haitian. Uh, I feel like Mock. He's like right there, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like in my opinion, I feel like um, um, I don't know. I don't know what it is because he's trying new shit. So I don't want to like shit on him and be like, oh, like he's doing the same thing because he's not. He's trying new things and he's doing new features and shit that he's never done before. Like he's evolving as an artist, which I think is dope. I'm just not uh, um, I'm just not getting that feeling like I did with HBO. HBO was a super duper feeling. You know what I mean? Um. Yeah, so um, don't take it as disrespect. Let's see. I've been seeing a lot of fives, man. Seeing a lot of fives. Um, shout out to I think it's New Moon. Oh, I don't want to fuck it up. Let me look. Let me look you up real quick. Let me look you up. New Moon Bloom. Shout out to the homegirl. Uh, I got this. It's a. Uh, and and it's so funny because you could sick tell that this isn't this isn't real gold. So this is real gold. I forgot what my father gave me this fucking see through gold chain. It's uh, I want to say it's fourteen carats. This is gold plated. You could tell like if it's spray painted. But this is actual jade. This is jade. You know jade bracelets, and then this moss moss agate um, ring right here. Uh, five dollars for the ring. I was on the fifth spot for open mic. It was five o'clock. Um, when um, I wanted to go to the Swami to pick up some shirts, and I told my uncle that, and you know, it's super crazy, like the synergy. You know what I mean? I'm a super big numbers guy. You know, superstitious, all that shit. Uh, so five, man, five in mathematics. Uh, supreme mathematics is power. You know what I mean? Power is influence. Influence is power. And uh, I think that's really dope, man. When you look at the the synergy and the numbers around you like any everything in nature can be broke down mathematically and um it's just super wild you know what i mean i see triple numbers i'll see like three 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 two 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 five 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 you know what i mean shit like that and it and it that's how i know like god is guiding me through this shit because i'll see shit and it'll remind me of things like like let's say like let's say i'll see five 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 you know what I mean? One day, the next day, let's say I'll be outside and a bird fly by. So I'll see 555. The next day, I'll be fucking walking. I'll see a bus. It'll say 555 on the round number and a bird will fly by. Like shit like that. And I'm like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? I'll just look up and be like, you know, all my angels are watching me. You know what I mean? Angel numbers. I fuck with that shit. Um, last thing or two more things. Um... Going back to Ghostface, man, somebody put like Ghostface is schizophrenic and shit because he said he was hearing voices on the Cuban Links album. And what I feel like, so if you're schizophrenic, I've like, I know, like, obviously, historian, he's schizophrenic. I've seen schizophrenia from like a first, not a first hand account, but like from what he's posted. Ghostface does not have that. He is not at all. Maybe. I understand what he's saying where you think like you get them thoughts. You know what I mean? Like it's so crazy when he said, uh, uh, when he told RZA, yo, uh, uh, a voice just told me, just told me to smack the shit out of you right now. And like RZA will break it down to him. And you know what I mean? Just break down the brain on Ghostface, and Ghostface will be cool. Um, and it's super weird. Cause he said that when he drank, he wouldn't hear shit. And then, but when he got sober, it'll be back to it. Everyone's body's different. Everyone's mental is different, but I can't relate to that because I would get them thoughts like, yo, punch this fool right now. Like, fucking. Someone would be talking while I'll be having a gut conversation. I'm like, yo, I want to smack this fool real quick. And it would almost feel like something was telling me, like, smack this fool. Like, just punch him in the fucking face. He's a fucking bitch. You know what I mean? But it's more complicated than that. When you hear voices like, yo, like, it's crazy because I've seen it, like, with the story when we've talked. He's literally told me, like, oh, yeah, like, I hear a... Uh, 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 John Witherspoon, Boondocks, you know, yeah, boy, you know what I mean? And I'm like, whoa, that's fucking crazy. That's like, you know what I mean? That's way out there, you know what I mean? So whoever posted that video, I don't know if it's for clicks or likes or something, Ghostface 
is does not have any mental illness, bro. Like, how dare you come out and try to piece it up? Yo, like, and he said on this album with this shit, and that's how on Nutmeg, when you hear his flow, probably Wiley Man and Dolly, whatever the fuck he said. It's like, bro, you're literally reaching for shit that's not there, bro. Like, really? Like, um... Uh, and at the end of the video, had he just been like, yo, this is just my opinion. What are you guys thinking about it? But, like, he's, like, trying to drive home the point that, like, Ghostface should be, like, fucking on, like, medication or something. And it's, like, it's super stupid because Ghostface even said, like, I went to a therapist and they, they've been getting me on pills. He doesn't like being on pills. That's the number one, number one reason why I don't like going to the doctor or seeing a therapist because they're going to try to get you on fucking all doped out. They're trying to get you on dope. They're trying to fucking run your bills up. And at the end, you're not even good. Like you're not even like you still are working with these everyday problems. So it's just better if you take a step back and you evaluate yourself and be like, yo, what the fuck is going on? What am I eating? What am I doing? That's not positive or, or bringing any sort of peace to my body and my mind. You know what I mean? I fucking killed that shit. Y'all see that shit? I'm talking that shit today, son. I um I had a whole bunch of other bullshit, um. You know um, why 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 am I gonna break this down right now? Um. Here it is, right? My journey, right? Everyone goes through journeys in their life, right? Everyone, someone might have it better than others. There's no reason why anyone should shit on each other for that, right? Like, just because you had it harder than me doesn't mean shit. You can't say, yo, dog, like, I've been down that road and you're probably not doing the best because I've done, I've been through that shit. You could do that, but you can't be like, oh, I don't give a fuck about you. You're a bitch. You haven't been through what I've been. And I, I've done that to other people. Like, I felt that way about other people. I'm trying to keep myself in check as well. When I was 12, I started painting. I held a Uzi when I was 14. I punk kids for lunch and Yu-Gi-Oh cards in elementary school. I fucking ran from the cops in middle school. Allegedly threatened teachers in high school. Dropped out of college. Failed art class and music classes. Three of my best friends died and my cousin by the time I was 20, I got kicked out of my house when I was 21. I bought my first gun when I was 23. I launched my clothing business at 26. My point is, I persevered and I let nobody get in my fucking way. Fuck the haters, bro. That's the message of the day. Fuck the fucking haters, bro. I done been through a whole bunch of shit and I let none of that shit get me down, bro. Just because you're going through hard times, you're going to look at some of your hard times and be like, damn, bro, like I appreciated the fuck out of that shit because I literally wouldn't have been the, the man I am today without that. And I thank God. I thank God I went through all this shit. I thank God I, I, I grew up in the summers in El Monte hungry and shit like that, fucking getting free lunch. Um, it wasn't like that all the time. I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to go on here and say like I was a porre or anything like that. I've had a good life my whole life. It's just I went through a whole lot of bullshit. But guess what? My fifth grade teacher told my mom. My mom was like, I'm worried about this kid. You know what I mean? My teacher was like, don't. He's he perseveres. You know what I mean? He has perseverance. Anything he sets his mind to, he could do it. And you could do it, too. With that, this is the God's Hour. Max was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara. On the other side. Side of that gat is karma, he wet Prada, the devil like inside your box now, while the angels fly over my headstone.